Taff and colleagues who work on Great White Sharks are occasionally criticised that we seem to place a lot of emphasis on one species, the Great White Shark, and forget that there is over 500 different shark species that call the ocean their home. Now this criticism is somewhat justified. The great white shark does suck up a lot of the media exposure, a lot of the tension. But there is a lot of scientists, a lot of good scientists and a lot of effort conducted on these other 500 odd shark species. And this documentary, Hammer Time, is all about that. It's about showcasing the work of a good friend and a colleague of mine, Gibbs Kaguru. He lived down here in Mossel Bay for a number of years conducting his master's research on the hammerhead shark. And this documentary aims to highlight his work, plus reveal a little bit more about the hidden lives of hammerhead sharks. You guys shark on? Uh, might be a hammerhead. Certainly fights like one. Yeah, hammer time. Muscle Bay, a small town on South Africa's southern coast. Here is the domain of the great white shark. This majestic ocean predator dominates Mossel Bay's marine ecosystem. A hidden presence, constantly lurking beneath the surface of this idyllic bay. But, believe it or not, the great white is not the only shark that calls Mossel Bay its home. Stellenbosch University master's student, Gibbs Kaguru, is fascinated by a smaller, weirder, and even more vulnerable species. The oddly shaped hammerhead shark. I think though the great white is a fan favorite uh, shark. Um, I, I don't think people realize that there are many other shark species that need to be studied. As a scientist, I think it's important not only to study what you uh, desire, but to also find where you can uh, fill gaps in knowledge and, and bolster the scientific community's standing. Um, as far as the hammerhead sharks go, they're a very understudied shark, so filling in that gap in knowledge is important. Today, Gibbs is heading seawards. His mission is to catch, genetically sample, and release the newborn hammerheads that use mussel bay as a nursery ground each summer. Genetics is actually a very powerful tool. With a little piece of tissue, I can look at genetic health, uh, to unique subspecies, bottlenecks, and how the different populations of the hammerheads interact. And to me, that's very exciting. It's, there's a little bit of an urgency to go and get the sharks uh, now. These are one of our last, one of our last trips. Within minutes, this season's final expedition takes a positive turn. There's a hammerhead right there. This newborn indicates that Gibbs may be able to add a few additional samples to his data set before heading to his university's laboratory. A good sign. So good, in fact that Gibbs decides to lay anchor and prepare sufficient and sampling equipment. Uh, we catch these sharks mainly to uh, tag them and then uh, sample a little piece of their fin. Um, and I use that fin clipping to run my genetic tests on them. But to successfully collect these genetic samples, Gibbs must contend with the bay's ultimate predator. From time to time, we do get a few great whites coming around our boat. 
Um, in general, we'll try to move away as quickly as possible because they'll end up munching our hammerheads. Fishing is Gibbs' go-to method for sampling sharks. He ensures minimal impact by using barbless circle hooks, thick line, and he works to a strict five minute time limit between hooking and releasing the shark. He's there, he's there, he's there. All right. With the shark hooked, the team springs into action and deploy a custom designed sling that will safely transfer the shark from the ocean to the operational platform. Okay, let's flip him, let's flip him, all the way around. Without a customary wing-shaped head, this is clearly a different species of shark. This is the bronze whaler. Basically, we collect other shark samples in order to fill our tissue bank so we can actually learn more about other species as well as the hammerheads. The clock is ticking. Gibbs quickly works through his checklist of data requirements, including identifying this little shark as a baby boy due to the small claspers protruding from its pelvic fin. Completed, it's time for the shark's release, allowing it to continue on with its sharky ways. You saw the shark swim off, uh, tagging it, so hopefully someone else picks it up somewhere else and then uh, we'll get the data from it. As the day drags on, the crew settles in waiting for that telltale tug that just may indicate a hammerhead. You got a shark on? All right, it is a hammerhead. Yeah. Come this side, Carrie. Just gonna let him go a little bit. Just swimming continuously under the boat. I just want to let him get out here. Success. Finally, a newborn hammerhead is secured in the sling. A life giving water hose is quickly inserted into the shark's mouth allowing it to breathe whilst out of the water. The shark is then fitted with a uniquely coated tag that can stay attached for over 20 years. If recaptured, Gibbs will know the secret movements and growth rate of the shark. Finally, Gibbs secures his vital genetic sample. A small clipping from the trailing edge of the shark's dorsal fin. With global populations of hammerheads in steep decline, Gibbs's research into the hidden genetic world offers them a much needed lifeline. The knowledge produced will give managers and conservationists the essential tools needed to conserve these wonderfully unique sharks in South Africa's coastal waters. Yeah.